This scene, even without context, is brilliant. If you've not seen Mad Max Fury Road, you're probably still intrigued by this scene. The 2015 George Miller film, upon release, set a new standard for how action movies should be shot. And with the most basic storyline, captivated a brand new audience to the cult status franchise. But what is the scene doing so well? And why is it so good? There's two key reasons. The first is storytelling. How this scene works so well is all about storytelling. The fight itself has a three act structure. Beginning, middle, end. In essence, all story should have an equilibrium, a disequilibrium, and then an equilibrium again. This also applies to franchise films. Frodo has his equilibrium, his disequilibrium, and then in the final film, he's back to his equilibrium. Not quite. There's room for a little more. This scene captivates the audience by doing the same. Max has the gun and the upper hand. Then he doesn't. Then he does. And it has stakes for each of the characters in play, which means that each character in the fight is contributing to their own stakes. Not to mention the various disadvantages each character has. Chains, guns, prosthetics, hidden guns, and physical size. Maybe more important than any of that is the technique that George Miller uses throughout the film called center framing. Look at each of these shots. Each one is framed in the center and this is to keep the viewer's attention firmly fixed on the action. and make it easy for them to follow. These are very simple techniques to make filmmaking more effective. And I cover it on my Bad Movie Fights versus Good Movie Fights video. Simple filmmaking is the best kind of filmmaking. So now let's go to our disequilibrium. This is a scene from the 2023 Zack Snyder film, Rebel Moon. Now based on everything we learned in the first scene, what's wrong with this scene? Well firstly, does this scene work without context? Well sure, on a basic level it does. With the, she wants to beat these guys up. But why? With Mad Max, he was at a physical disadvantage with the chains and the mask. Is there a story here? No, aside from this character wants to hurt these other characters. Any sense of framing? Absolutely not. But not all action movies use sense of framing, so the question is, would it help this scene? And absolutely it would. Mad Max has a lot of little moments that happen really quickly and you'd appreciate them a lot more on a second viewing. Snyder chooses slow-mo. But a lot of the slow-mo is not there to help the audience understand the action. Its purpose seems unclear. A perfect example of this. Very unclear as to what was meant to happen there. And it could be argued that the slow-mo is actually making the scene worse. Did the scene have an equilibrium? 
a disequilibrium and an equilibrium. It did not. We go from a character that is angry, wanting to beat up their enemies, to achieving this with little fuss or disadvantages to her. What are you waiting for? I gave you an order. Kill this! Then she's assisted by a character who appears from nowhere. So again, out of context, this scene doesn't work. It doesn't follow a structure and the framing is difficult to follow. And these two snippets from both films clearly show where one film is adored and revered as one of the most incredible action movies ever made. and the other one has underwhelmed tremendously. So, back to our equilibrium. This makes you want to see what happens next. Alive, it's gonna shred her, shred her. Mad Max Fury Road had no right being as good as it was. It was a very basic storyline and there were huge production problems including fights between Charlie Theron and Tom Hardy. However, despite this, the film is considered to be a modern day masterpiece and firmly cemented George Miller as one of the most important filmmakers of his generation and maybe of all time with his wonderful versatility and diversity when it comes to genres. Rebel Moon is a clear example of what can happen when a filmmaker has too much power and not enough pushback and shows what happens when you ignore the simplicity of filmmaking. This is Cinema is Dying and this has been volume three of Bad Filmmaking versus Good Filmmaking. And until we speak again, big loves.